Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a Terran versus Zerg where in game number one we find ourselves on the map Aradusen Station. Spotting right here in the top right hand corner, playing with the blue Terran SCVs, we have Kerr. His opponent in the opposite corner, playing with the red Zerg drones, he goes by the name of Shin. Two of... Well, I was going to say two of the very best Korean pro gamers. Maybe not quite at the tippity top, but right below that, right? I mean, Cure, some of the very best, especially Terran versus Protoss in the world. Last time I casted Cure, um, he went up against Raynor. I did a Terran versus Zerk where Cure was playing against Raynor. And in that particular series, Cure played incredibly passively for some reason. He basically decided to never attack until a full split map scenario. I'm not exactly sure if he was specifically doing that against Raynor, but he was playing Terran mech and some of the most passive Terran gameplay that I've seen all year. Now, I guess all year doesn't really mean that much, but I have seen quite a few games of SC2 so far, and most Terran players, especially against Zerk, are playing a very active style at the moment. Now, Shin, um, he usually does like being at least somewhat aggressive, but... Curious to see how this is gonna go when, yeah, Curious once again committed to playing a slower style. I really don't know if he did that specifically against Raynor, if, or if that's just like his go-to strategy at the moment. It's a command center first right here after the supply depot. Now we are on Raduset Station. This is a map that does function a little bit differently than the majority of the StarCraft 2 maps out there, so... Usually because of that, players either play super cheesy because they expect the opponent to play very greedy or, more commonly, both players play a very greedy game. The rush distance from natural to natural is incredibly long, by far the longest in the current map pool. And because of that, I, I wonder, even if you go for like a spawning pool first, you probably are still not going to be able to do much against the command center first. And obviously, spawning pool first, unupgraded Zerklings against Terran in general is just not a build. Just because uh, one Reaper, <laughs> maybe a Marine, would already do fantastically well against that. There's that pocket base that you can very easily take. Mineral wall over here as well with some debris that can be destroyed. And watchtowers that allow you to keep tabs. So if if Cure wants to play that passive style once again, if that's his go-to right now, this would be the map for it. So this is a... <laughs> this is a command center into a barracks into another command center. Yeah. So if you're like a Gold League Bailing Buster, right? If that's your go-to strategy against Terran. I know there's at least a hundred of you watching. <laughs> this would... You would just win the game. You would win the game against one of the very best Terrans in the world. Yeah. Maybe a little bit mean. You're actually not scouting at all. So he's just going for, yeah, a single Reaper. Adding on additional barracks. Going into a, a reactor here too. One of the advantages of being this quick on the expansions is that you don't really need supply depots. You can just, yeah, make one every once in a while, but those command centers actually provide a ton of supply. I wonder if this one is actually even a little too early. We could have probably delayed that one ever so slightly because with this third command center finishing up, Cure is gonna be, yeah, he's gonna have plenty of supply available. Shin also, that's by the way, in case you haven't watched a ton of StarCraft lately, this is Ragnarok's new username. Evolution complete. No, really? Shin, you play with the D.Va announcer? Oh, God. Missed opportunity. He could have been playing with the Loco announcer, but... Fair enough. Apparently, he plays with the D.Va one. Is my music on? It was not. It's on now, though. I can't believe it. That is probably the most annoying announcer in the entire game. D.Va, of course, from Overwatch. When you play with her and you don't have enough minerals... Normally you hear like, we require more minerals, right? Or maybe if you play in German, we brauchen mehr Mineralien, right? It sounds kind of cool. Diva, she says over and over and over again, you're all out of minerals, but there's plenty of rocks. I never really understood what she meant, but I guess she means the mineral rocks. Super annoying. It's also a very long voice line. And if you're macroing decently well, she will basically repeat that every game about a thousand times. Which, uh... Is not my favorite thing to listen to. No. No. Anyways. Shin also, by the way, playing a very greedy game. Yeah. Not really making anything so far. Only just now is when we see the lair coming up. This is not super late, all things considered, but he hasn't really made a lot of units. 
We don't have safety spore crawlers. We have, well, I guess defensive queens. Yeah, I didn't quite see all of them sitting here at the front. He is ready to bring all of that creep all around the map. Yeah, when you switch to the vision of a player, you can actually hear the announcer that they're playing with. Additional supply depots required. So, Cure is probably playing with the default Korean language. I, I, I yeah, I, I would imagine he does not play with the English language, but I think the voice line for the default one does actually change depending on the language that you play in. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm fairly certain that, that is how it works. You can, by the way, go into the StarCraft 2 settings and switch your entire game or all of the voice lines to other languages. It's kind of fun if you're tired of the voice lines that you have. Until a tactical nuke gets deployed and you don't recognize it. I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> With the Korean Abathur. The Korean Abathur sounds amazing. Until he said a voice line I had never heard before and that turned out to be tactical nuke detected. Thank you very much, Korean Abathur. I switched back after losing everything. All right, so once again, I, I don't know if this is what Cure likes to do, but he's playing very passively. So in that series against Raynor, he played both a very passive style with Terran Mech and then also a very passive style with Terran Bio. I thought the Mech style was pretty neat. With Mech, it makes sense that you play pretty passive, but with Bio, usually we see players yeah, moving around the map quite actively. And I wonder if Cure is once again going to do that. So normally he's got some of the very best multitasking in the world, especially in Terran versus Protoss. It's incredibly good. But for some reason in that particular series, he was just mostly moving in one big ball, trying to move through the center of the map and really trying to just force the split map scenario. Now again, maybe that was specifically against Raynor, but not a lot of players seem to play that style. Okay. Four additional supply depots on the production tab. Because the man hit a little bit of a supply block. Nine Mutas coming up in the meantime right here for Shin. So he is just happily spreading creep around. Banelink speed at this point is done right here as well for the South Korean Zerg. I wonder if he ever made a statement as to why he changed his ID. I think Ragnarok is a pretty great name. But... Apparently Shin doesn't like it. Shin apparently is his actual name. So he used to play under the nickname Hebum as well for a little bit, which is apparently, I think, either his family name or his middle name or something along those lines. But then he apparently changed it up to another one of his names. No longer Ragnarok. Okay, well, catching one of the Metavex at least. Could target fire down the second one, okay. No Mutas going down there. Not bad whatsoever. Careful, Diva, tell him. Okay. Well, Diva did tell him, but it was a little too late. Your forces are under attack! That's what she sounds like. Maybe I should use my voice changer for that. Your forces are under attack! Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I think it's a little too high-pitched. I can change... <laughs> I can change the, the audio interface, but... I've got only the most extreme versions. This one? And this one. No, we should not do that. Nah, we shouldn't be playing around with that all too much. Alrighty. Are we gonna go into a hive here as well, Shin? Or are we gonna stick around on mostly just this lair tech based army? Because I don't see an infestation pit and I see plus two plus two already started. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm just gonna back that up for a little bit. Did he already position those widow mines there? Nope, nope. They're coming right now. So he moves, yeah, he moves those Widow Mines just perfectly out of the line of sight. So when these Mutas come in, he doesn't see them. Happy New Year. Some fireworks being set off right there by Cure. Really slowing down the aggression there, though, because this takes the wind out of the sails of those Mutalisks. And it's one of the reasons why Mutas are just not played that often. I, yeah, I think this map is pretty good for Mutas, because... In general, obviously, there's a lot of space to cover, and generally on the bigger maps. A faster-moving army just simply makes sense. But there's a reason why we don't see that much Muta play as of late. It's not that the unit composition is bad, so Mutaling Bane is very powerful. It's just that, well, 
for example, Hydra Ling into like Lurker works just as well and it's a whole lot safer. Paper planes. Very expensive paper planes is what the Mutas usually end up with. Thors are coming right now too, so Cure is not even done yet. Really countering the unit and he's already taken care of quite a few of them. Okay. Drilling claws. That's gonna allow those widow mines to burrow and unburrow a little quicker. Attack in the top left hand corner. The entire Terran army is over there, so. Yeah, that does create a bit of an opportunity at least to potentially do an attack out on the map. Cure, by the way, playing this a lot more actively than he did against Raynor, which is interesting. Okay. It is gonna get pushed back here in the end. Couple transfuses. No, not going to happen. Brenda apparently did not care about Karen. Maybe that's the name. Now, Mutas are very good at punishing mistakes. Yeah, if you overextend against Mutas... Oh, okay. Generally speaking, Hydras, you're gonna be able to just run away as a Terran player, or more commonly, you can fly away. Against Mutalisks, that's a bit more difficult, because those units are very good at chasing you down. Okay. So, we are on 4 base, now even 5 base economy here. I think it's about time we make a transition towards... Ghosts. I don't think Ghosts would be a bad choice. The problem is, you never really know exactly what's coming on the back of this, right? For Zerg. So, unless he's been scanning over and over and over again... No, he's never seen his opponent's natural expansion. So, he doesn't know that there's no Ultralisk on the production tab just yet. A sudden Ultralisk switch here with 3-3 Research and Adreno Glands would be very dangerous for Terran. And I don't think Cure would be able to, yeah, easily hold himself against that. It seems a bit silly to make this many command centers, already go into the building armor upgrade and everything else, before we are ready to deal with some proper late game Zerg units. But there's a good chance as well that Cure is just very familiar with the way that Shin likes to play this at the moment. And apparently the way he likes to play it is by sticking around on Lair Tech for a long time. Okay, so... Mutas are fun, but they're not usually... Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> Mutas are fun. They can be quite powerful, but they don't generally win games by themselves. So we do have a Zerkling drop, it seems like. Headed what seems to be towards the pocket expansion. Okay. Let's see. I would have liked to see both of these players improve their army a little bit more. Uh, he's trying to jump, yeah. Can he Can he hit it in time? Looks like quite a few of the Banelings. Oh, that's very dangerous, Cure! Okay. I don't recommend hugging those units. In the meantime, the Mutas are getting absolutely torn apart. Yeah, this is not looking all too hot right here for the Zerk. This map is tough for Zerk in general, so we'll have to see what map number two is going to be in this series. But if I were to make a guess, this is the Terran's map pick. Although I'm not exactly sure, the series is from the WTO, I'm not exactly sure how to do map design, or map decisions rather, in that particular event, but... Game number one solidly goes in favor of Cure. Alrighty, game number two, we find ourselves on the map Equilibrium. This is a best of two series, because it is from the WTL. So, I don't actually know if this has happened yet, but technically speaking, this could end into a, this, this could end with a one-to-one -one score. Now I decided to look it up. Cure is currently the rank 10 in the world overall, according to Aligulek, and Shin is currently considered to be the rank 15. Now where exactly are we taking this drone, Shin? Looks like we're going to be going for a gold base first. Alrighty. So this is most definitely then his map pick, right? This map is very good for Zerk overall. Although, I feel like when the new map pool was first introduced, we used to see Zerk win pretty much every single time on this map. But the last few times that I've seen a Zerk versus Protoss and a Zerk versus Terran on it, don't get me wrong, it's still really good for Zerk. But Terrans and Protosses seem to have done a better job managing the golden minerals, at least as of late. 
There have been a few split map scenarios as well. And yeah, in those games, it actually, in the long drawn out macro matches, it does actually seem to be quite playable for Terran overall. Okay. So what exactly do you change up, right? What, what exactly went wrong right there for Shin? Well, he decided to play Mutas, and then the Mutas died. I, I think Mutas are really good when you can get that tempo advantage. But if you lose a group of Mutas, so I think we saw about a dozen go down there to random things. Most notably, I guess, those Widowmine connections and the natural expansion of the Terran. But if you lose your Mutas to a bunch of random mines and a couple two Marines and a few here and there, you just can't really commit to them very well. And... You just get overwhelmed when the Terran army gets better. So usually with Mutas, you delay your upgrades. So you decide to delay the evolution chambers and you focus on the lair instead. And then usually when you get to lair, you stick around that lair for quite a while. And then ultimately you go into a hive. The evolution chamber upgrades are just very late. And yeah, you could really tell there when Cure's upgrades kicked in. Because Shin didn't have them yet. Now Cure is gonna have to change up his strategy a little bit. Okay, which look at that as well. Shin also making a change. That is a two minute and 20 second Roach Warren. So that's exceptionally early. Since this was a 15 hatch, the queen also pops nice and early. Reaper not gonna be able to achieve too much. Okay, straight into a reactor. If Cure is not going to find out about the Roach Warren, nice save right there on the SCV, pops it into the command center for just a second, but if he doesn't find out, life can actually get very difficult. He does see the lack of third hatchery for now. So you gotta start thinking, yeah, he's actually making a cyclone. I think that's the right choice. Seven roaches, these are very quick roaches, as he does, by the way, kill two drones here with the Reaper. That is not really meant to happen. Nine roaches coming up. I think Hellions would be in a lot of trouble. Cyclones? Doing a lot better here. Okay. Command Center. Start CC, that is. Coming up early again, but not quite as early as we saw in Raduset. So he must have seen that roach over there now, and that's going to make that decision a bit easier. Cyclones really are good, but... I mean, hmm, they're quite good against roach attacks like this. I don't actually know exactly how much you commit here as a zerg. So he did decide, of course, to skip the baneling speed, and well, the baneling speed too, but the zergling speed, most notably. And if there's no ling flood on the back of this, so he's droning behind it, how much can you really do with the Roaches and Ravagers? Well, he's gonna have to get something done, because it's a... Yeah, it's quite a commitment. SCVs, repair, good. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of those situations where... The Cyclone is actually a pretty great unit. You know what's really funny to me about the new Cyclone? Originally... We used to see it mostly in the Terran versus Zerg matchup. However, according to the patch notes, the goal for the Cyclone was to make it, and mech in general, a little bit more commonly played in the Terran versus Protoss matchup. However, the matchup where we really only see them these days is Terran versus Terran. <laughs> Isn't that weird? We really see them a ton in TVT. I know I don't cast a lot of Terran versus Terran, although there's a Maru versus Clem series that I do want to go ahead and check out. The current number one and two Terrans in the world. I think that would be a bit of a banger, but... Cyclones are very commonly played in TBT. Very rarely in Terran versus Protoss, and... Well... I guess we've seen Hero Marine play them a bunch against Zerg. But even when Cure last played Terran Mech, so he's not going to go Terran Mech this time around, he's just going straight into Terran Bio once again, so I guess that match against Raynor was just a one-off strat. But anyways... Last time, um... Yeah, I've seen Cyclones in this matchup. It was really just as like a response to what we have right here, for example, where Cure scouted. Okay, my opponent is going for something aggressive. Sorry, Mr. Overlord, you're super dead. Yeah. You scout something aggressive from the Zerg, and then you use a bunch of those Cyclones to, well, defend whatever you need. Not a lot of early game aggression from Zerg players, actually, as of late in general. 
I do think there's an opportunity for like Link Flood. But yeah, since Terrans have been pretty fond again of playing that, uh, well, either a double barrack style with quick Stimpak or, for example, Benchies, I guess it's just not a great choice. Anyhow, all the upgrades are happening once again for Terran. We'll probably see combat shields in a moment on that particular tech lab. It doesn't really line up with anything in particular, so I don't think Cure is going to be making a big move, although he could certainly give it a try when 1-1 one -one finishes. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, we've got ourselves a Roach upgrades. So, Shin is mixing up his strategy, as in he is skipping the bailing altogether. Okay. Yep, just pure Roach Ravager. Now he's at 63 workers, and he seems to be making a very large army. Is he just going to go for a classic 1-1 one -one timing attack? It seems like it. Baby's first timing attack. This, this is what every Zerg player learned when they first started playing SC2. It's a little out of whack here because the timings are not quite as sharp. Because of the early game and the golden minerals and all that, but... Baby's first timing attack is a plus one, plus one, a roach speed push. And I think that's what Shin is committing to. I think it works really well when Terrans have... A pretty shaky early game, so an early game where they just don't play very efficiently at all, but Cure doesn't really seem to be too bothered, although you can see it right now in the supply count. Zork does have an awful lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, if I were to have kids, this is the build order I would teach them right away. Very important. When's the right age to teach your kids to cannon rush? I don't know, guys. A fake medevac drop headed into the main base. I actually love this so much. We've been seeing this so frequently as of late. It's so neat though, look at that. So what? Three empty medevacs? We have like an entire push delayed. It's actually brilliant. He gets a full extra production cycle here. Well, he is gonna commit, but I don't think he can do it anymore. That triple medevac, quote unquote, drop. So nice. Zerk cannot see that those medevex are empty. So he simply has to, yeah, believe that they aren't. I don't think he can commit anymore. I think it's too late now. We had like a, what was it? Like a 40 supply lead or so, but now there's so many tanks. Lovely play right there from Cure. Hmm. Look at this as well. This is just to rub salt in the wound. He just has one of those medevacs right-clicked onto a Ravager. <laughs> Since there's no anti-air other than the Queens. Uh, it can always boost it away. Imagine playing a strategy game. Or a strategy inside of a strategy game. Insane. Cure apparently is feeling so good about himself that he's making a bit of a move out. And you know what? I don't disagree with him. Good splits. Bailings are coming, but Centrifugal Hooks is only about maybe a third of the way done. Couple of balls right there. Marines trying to move forward once again. Roaches and Ravagers just dancing here, trying to buy time. So he's got himself, yeah, the Hive done right now. So this is that Serral esque transition, or at least the one that we've seen Serral play quite a bit. Albeit at obviously a different stage in the game, but he is going into Ultraling Bane ultimately together with Vipers and Adrenal Glands and all the rest of it. But this does mean that for the time being, Shin has just spent, yeah, like a thousand minerals, a thousand gas on things that aren't in play yet. And Cure is not nearly that invested. Oh, great stance right there. Beautiful. Now, that was a little costly. And I do think we're kind of at the point where Zerg doesn't really want to have too many Ravagers and Roaches anymore. Ah, he's remaking some of them, probably a bit scared. But I don't think there's really that much aggression on the back of this. Nope. <laughs> this is when we go for the Command Center explosion. Okay. It's a lot of CCs. Ghost Academy on the back it is now too. So he's actually quite late on the Ghost Academies in these games. 
Mm. Maybe Terrans have just been delaying it a little bit. Back in my day, aka a few months ago, we used to see it as soon as the fourth command center would go down. Essentially at, at latest. You would add on some additional barracks and then go into... Yeah, you would add them on with barracks 6, 7, and 8, but... No indicator here that you really need it super early, and I guess these roach openers are just a little slower. Okay. Cure going for... Oh my god, really? We're committing into this? I mean, some nice blinding clouds. Disabling quite a few of those tanks. Still, though, the Vipers has, have also gone down, and there's still a lot of bio army remaining. Now the blinding clouds are wearing off. It looks like Shin does decide to commit. A couple of the siege tanks are touching, so corrosive biles will be able to make short work of them. Reinforcing Terran units right now. Yeah, streaming across the map, trying their very best. Moving out of the bile range once again. Metavex pick up. Boost away and get back home. Is there enough right now for the Terran player to defend against this? Because, yeah, he's got his money spent, but mostly on command centers. Okay, this could actually do a lot of damage. Corrosive Biles are dodged, but in the meantime, the Zerklings are ravaging a mineral line. Trying to best, or trying his best here to close out this game, but it looks like Cure is going to be able to hold. So... That was a very critical hold here for Cure. He is significantly behind in the supply count, but one thing he did do is add on all of those additional command centers. So he's gonna go up to like, yeah, another planetary fortress here. And he's already up to five orbital commands. So those orbital commands are gonna be incredibly handy. Right now the man is kind of broke, but he's, yeah, he's made some investments here into the future. He's basically sold his house and bought Bitcoin. Will it pay off? That's the question. Bad idea. I don't think you should do that. Mm. No, I don't think you should do that. Got some Ultralisk over here. Man, Ultras. <laughs> Ultras really kind of suck. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm... I like Ultras when Terran is kind of on the back foot, you know? I find I find Ultras... Okay, that was neat. Although I think he only killed mules. I find Ultras pretty good when Zork is leading the game. And they're trying to obtain the victory. You know, when Terran's kind of behind, they haven't really made the ghost transition yet, or they're not quite up to Liberator tech yet, but... Cure is already at both of those units. So, he's got both ghosts, as well as Liberators, and now Ultras are starting to hit the battlefield. I don't exactly see what they're going to be able to achieve, but I guess we'll see how much value Shin can get out of this. Great move right here, though, by Cure, just in general. Yeah, expending his infrastructure a ton. Shin apparently ready to go for another big attack. That blinding cloud, once again, lovely. Corrosive Biles will be able to take care of that. Backing up to the safety of the Planetary Fortress. Siege Tank's dealing a ton of damage. Planetary, okay, actually taking a lot of damage, too, and does end up falling. Reinforcing Terran units popping out of those barracks. Now, was that a good trade here for the Zerg? Not really. It looked spectacular. It looked like he was breaking through. But there's plenty of command centers remaining to replace it. And maybe in isolation that fight wasn't so bad, but that was quite a commitment right there from Shin. Resources lost wise at this point, pretty much even. Slight advantage for the Terran, but nothing all too crazy. We're a little late, actually, on some of these upgrades. So, Cure does have plus three, plus three done for his biological units already. And plus three melee here for the Zerg coming up. Apparently, we got a missile upgrade. Oh, yeah, obviously we did with the Road Ravager push at the start. I still love that empty medevac drop. What do we call that? Do we call it a, an empty medevac drop? I don't even know if we can really call it a drop if there's no drop. I would say that the verb dropping would imply dropping. Still feels like a medevac drop, though. <laughs> Alright, this medevac is super dead. Yeah, these guys, they get like a couple seconds here to say out their final wishes, and that's about it. 
Zerkling push here. Or marine push rather up towards the high ground, sniping a few Zerklings. Yeah, what Cure is trying to do, so this map is usually quite difficult for Terran, but one spot where it is maybe even quite favorable is the extreme late game. Because you can take the left side of the map here for Cure spawn location relatively easily. If he can mine out his entire side of the map, he should be able to get an advantage over the course of this game. It's just gonna take a while. So, if he can mine out this expansion, and then also this one down south. If he can mine 50% of the resources of this map, he should pull out a hit. There's the fusion core coming up. There's the double star ports as well. Building armor researcher. <laughs> He's basically just getting whatever he needs. You know, whenever I see a fusion core at this point in the game, I always wish it's for battle cruisers. Am I the only one? This is not for battle cruisers. This is for mass liberator. But I want to believe that we're going to see tech labs over here and then a battle cruiser transition. That would make me a very happy viewer. I think it's going to just be reactors and no battle cruisers at all. Like, you don't need battle cruisers here. This is it a good choice? No, not really. Are they cool though? Yeah, they are. Yep, it's for reactors. So we're gonna be going for the ranged upgrade, the advanced ballistics on those libs. And then it's up to Shin to pwn the libs. Okay, there you go. A little bit of sightseeing with the Metavex. I do like that. <laughs> The pilots, you know? I mean, I, I'm talking about the Metavex being empty, but maybe they weren't empty, because there's clearly somebody in there piloting the whole thing. Now, Shin sees the direction that this game is headed into, so his entire goal here should be to deny those outer bases. They're very close to the Zork side of the map, oh my god. Those Widowmines were hurting quite a bit. Very close to the Zerg side of the map, so a lot of creep to maybe accompany any of these attacks as well. But it's critical here that Shin denies these bases, and right now, he does not have an easy way of doing it. I don't really know exactly what unit he should use here, but I would imagine it's Brute Lords. I, I don't think sitting back here and running in Lingbane Ultra is the move. It's just too expensive. Unless Terran, like, gives you the detonation, right, on all of those ghosts. Now, he does kill another command center. That one should have definitely cancelled the planetary fortress and just taken off into the skies. But I guess that Cure has a bunch more CCs. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> he adds on four more. Tactical nuke on the production tab, too. I actually think nukes are very nice here. Like, if all you need is, like, another 20 seconds of time to, for example, finish your planetary fortress in this spot, nuking the low ground just to get the Zerk to back off is very nice. A zoning nuke. A timing nuke, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of Liberators available. So... Yeah, losing one. Not the end of the world. It's the mythological Hydra. We saw it with the command center already. One command center goes down, bam, four new ones. One liberator goes down, bam. And look at this, man. So this is the infrastructure expansion over here. Oh, can he nuke over the high ground? I think he can. Mr. Ghost. Oh, okay, well, I think they were going to nuke, but uh, they found a couple of big boy targets. So I think if you're over here, you can probably... Yeah, you can nuke this side for sure. There we go. Across the crevice. Now this time around it's no planetary fortress. Plus, I think we should actually saturate this base immediately. There's the nuke, by the way. Not achieving anything, of course. Shen has decided that he's given up on that location. That's a good feeling for the Terran. <laughs> when you see the Zerg given up on that fight altogether, you know that they're gonna be attacking through the center. So Libs are waiting over here. Planetary in a choke point. Love to see it. New command center coming up. Ghosts on idle. My god. 
Cure has mastered the art of turtling. Yeah. So back in the day, what Zerg players used to do was roll over it with loads of banelings and stuff, right? Like, that's a style we used to see quite a bit. When Terrans would stick on this bio base army, and they wouldn't really make a transition towards ghost mech, banelings would sort of overwhelm the marine marauder clump at some point. But I guess the 5 HP reduction on the baneling has been noteworthy for this particular situation here. Because those banelings just don't achieve that much. Obviously, in a lot of those scenarios, in the past, they would have died as well. But I think we've seen hundreds upon hundreds of Banes already in this game. Just with five less hit points each, it really is significant. Look at how much money Cure actually has. Yeah, and he is not intending on winning this game before he splits the entire map. I don't think so. Shin has a lot of money too. But what army do you make? What is what is the move here for Zerg? So there's a sudden Brute Lord transition. Okay. This is not something that Terran's currently prepared for. But, I mean, he's got ghosts. Ghosts are not bad. There's 11 of them. Brute Lords are quick, but they can't really reposition like, for example, Ultralis can. You know what? Liberators are not bad! Yeah, I was gonna say! Fully upgraded Liberators? Look at that. Against clumped up targets, actually hit pretty hard. It's a good thing right there that Shin decided to back off. It's weird when I get excited about Liberator air-to-air -air combat, but... <laughs> it certainly can happen that you lose the game. Looks like we had a little bit of damage here. One pesky Zorkling preventing the full split map for now. Okay. Tactical nuke once again. Coming right up. I think we'll probably see nukes more and more on this side of the map. But you know what? Cure is okay with this. He doesn't need this base. All he really needs is to keep that base of his own alive. Tactical nuke up north right now. Killing one of these expansions of the Zerg. That would be lovely. And it looks like he's going to be able to easily get that. Don't do it, lads. Mr. Marauder, man. All right. Brute Lords have shown up. But the Terran Bio Army is long gone. Yeah, so Infestors is one of the ways in which we see Zerg players still winning the late game. But with the most recent patch, one thing they also changed is the Fungal Growth Range. So this was kind of just like pushed in the patch. Didn't really hear a lot of people talk about it, but in these scenarios, it is very significant. So it's a minus one range reduction on fungal growth. This is looking pretty tough for Zerk, though. Like, in a bunch of those games that I've seen lately, I'm not exactly sure what Zerk should do differently. I think their best chance is to prevent the split map, but we're already there. Well... This expansion is going to get denied over here at the bottom of the map, but... I mean, if Zerg doesn't get to mine this one, it's still effectively a split map, right? Resources lost, now heavily in favor of Terran. Wonderfully played here, of course, by Kyar. And he gets another base. He denies another one. He's even setting up a command center in the middle of the map. Okay, that widow mine almost betraying his friends. Somehow, some way, one SCV gets to live to tell the story. That's beautiful. More brute lords are coming up. Yeah, Cure is done dealing with the brute lords, though. He is not going to use ghosts and marines and anti-air with the liberators. He's instead going to be using a lot of Vikings, producing six of them at once. That is a lot, but Zork does have access, of course, to the Wombo Combo. Fungal Growth, together with Parasitic Bomb, for example, would be an amazing choice here for the Zerg. So if he can land that, there is still definitely a chance, since those Vikings and the Liberators tend to clump up, there's still definitely a chance that Shin sweeps the floor with his entire Terran force. 
Another tactical nuke flies across the map. Again, same spot, a little bit of deja vu. It's forcing the Zerg to back off, and Terran tries to retake it. Now that's a bit cheeky. <laughs> Very ambitious, uh, the little ambitious drone over there. I feel like that was a Terran's children's book right there. The ambitious drone. One day, the drone woke up and decided he wanted to become a hatchery. That's a book I would definitely read to my kids if I ever have any kids. Absolutely. Gotta teach them early. Don't be overly ambitious with your workers. Look at this, by the way. Oh, <laughs> cure! Well, that's one way to force a split map. You know what? This is... Oh, there's the fungal. There's the parable. There it is, yeah. This is not even really a split map anymore. This is uh, Terran taking one of the bases. This is a split map plus one in favor of the Terran. This is supposed to be the other way around. These traits can now be extremely cost inefficient for the Terran and it would still be okay. He's taking care of this expansion once more. This, this is actually very cheeky here by Kier. Recognizing the battle at the bottom of the map. Double planetary fortress here too. So the one thing he doesn't have anymore is a lot of gas. That's a theme we saw as well in the Rainer series. For some reason, he's not on top of his gas mining in the late game. Yeah, look at this. There's just not a lot of saturation on those gases. That may ultimately bite him in the butt though, because there's still quite a bit of money in the bank right here for Shin. But this is an expensive Zerk army as well. Look at that. Over 10,000 minerals there when at least I started that sentence. So he can't lose that much. Okay. Shin trying to steal the base right now from the Terran, spreading creep to the high ground, getting some of those spore crawlers there as well. We're actually so late in some of these upgrades, I'm surprised we only just now see plus two air weapons. Yeah, considering we've had those upgrades going for a while, Ooh, Viper gets killed. Parasitic Bomb split off. Nicely done by Cure. A little more <laughs> Marauder drop here at the bottom of the map. Once again, the overly ambitious drone. It wasn't meant to be. Okay. Liberator's actually forcing a lot of those Corruptors to not clump up like that. There's the Fungal. Whoa, that's a big Fungal. Yeah. Okay, ultimately it looks like the ground army here is gonna get overwhelmed by the Brute Lords. So, Cure does still have a lot of snipes going down, as you can hear. Pew, 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 pew. But there's the death sounds as well, off all of those ghosts. This is the engagement that Shin's been hoping for for a while. I don't think we should sack the Zerklings, we are not rich anymore, Shin. Okay, he will be able to deny this base, and apparently he needed to deny it right away. What a battle! Base at the bottom of the map once again. Gases are now fully saturated. Mules are also landed. This expansion will be denied once again. We still have a gas geyser over here. Yeah, we're up to 4,000 minerals here, but no gas. That is a little shaky. Terran taking the income advantage here. Shin is all the way down to 27 workers. It's not a lot. But he does catch a bunch of those marauders. Probably the same marauders that ultimately killed that drone a little while ago. Missile turrets still chilling at the watchtower. But not for much longer, it seems. Although this little widow mine over here may just... Nope. Do a good enough job. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. So Kuras decided that he's got too much gas, so he's dumping the gas into Blue Flame Hellbet. Not a bad choice. But it would really help if we just checked all of our gas geysers and then, you know, made a decision based off of that instead. But anyways, Blue Flame Hellbet's still a pretty good choice. So not going into Marines, by the way. I guess it's because he sees the mass Zerkling transition, and when you see Zerk go for this many links in the late game, you know that they have run out of, well, gas, right? There's not a whole lot of gas anymore for Shin either. 
He decides to dump what little gas he has on the infestors right now. And this is starting to look like a Terran victory now. It is going to be very difficult for Shin to get a new base up and going. So that means that this over here is his lifeline. He still has a bit of gas income over there. Okay, obviously with the correct fungal growths, things can still happen. Hydralis den, by the way. I'm not exactly sure. I guess it's mostly just to deal with the Hellbats and the Vikings? Yeah. The problem is if we commit right now to Hydralisks, it kind of feels to me that we're giving up on the Brute Lords and the Corruptors. And that's the backbone right here for this entire Zerg army. Because the Vikings, I mean, obviously Hydras can kill Vikings as well, but... Generally speaking, the Vikings are going to be able to kite Hydras around whilst they're shooting at all those Brutes. Pre-splitting here as well by Cure, by the way. Really lovely work. Couple Infestors, a little overly ambitious, but we did see a nice fungal growth. Marines are just dealing so much damage. Those Hellbats on the ground also very good against the Brutelings now that they have that Blue Flame upgrade. There it is. Cure! He obtains the victory to, to zero.